What's happening YouTube? Cowboy here and welcome back to another Heroes of the Storm strategy showcase. This time around we are taking a look at the Broodmother herself, Zagara. So Zagara is a ranged specialist and in my opinion one of the most versatile characters in the game. She can be played as a very powerful ranged DPS teamfight type hero. She can be played as a siege lane pushing type hero. And it really makes her a lot of fun to play. Um, you know, especially once you get the, the hang of, of all of her abilities and the... I guess the more the finesse needed to really work with her. So taking a look at hero info, first up we have Baling Barrage, launch a stream of Banelings that explode on contact with the enemy, and similar to how they worked in StarCraft 2, these are your bunker busters. These things do excellent damage at buildings. I like to shoot them right at the connection where a tower meets a gate to get solid damage into both. On top of that, with proper timing, you can do a lot of damage with these in team fights. And uh, the last thing I want to mention, just because I'm starting to see Sergeant Hammer all over the place, probably because he's free this week, but man, Banelings shred Sergeant Hammer's butthole wide open. He goes into siege mode, you drop out the Banelings, and he has nothing to do but sit there and just eat it. So really, really effective, especially against stationary heroes like that. Moving on to our second ability, Hunter Killer, unleash a Hydralisk on the enemy. An awesome, awesome ability. The Hydralisk does relatively high damage and will basically just chase a target down as long as it can. Um, excellent for getting s sustaining constant damage on stealth targets like a Zeratul or a Nova. And on top of that, it's really good to just kind of put it on the healer and let the healer just slowly tick down as the Hydralisk takes out its health. Moving on there from there, we have Infested Drop. Bombard an area with a Zerg Drop Pod that spawns Roachlings. Two Roachlings, actually. And this is a pretty good ability. Um, in combat, if you hit the drop, it does relatively moderate damage, and the Roachlings can help a little bit. But all in all, the main usage of this is going to be to help push towers, as those Roachlings will soak up ammo in addition to doing some damage. And lastly, we have Creep Tuber. Generates creep, allowing Zagara and her minions to move faster. Perhaps one of the most underutilized abilities on Zagara. And I say this because you should be using Creep Tuber constantly. As long as you are on Tumor, you regenerate health faster and you move faster. So it's very similar to kind of how, um, I guess, Broodmother from Dota has her web. So in short, you should always be fighting on creep. Anywhere you go, start putting down creep. And as long as you put down creep, you'll have a good time. So moving on to heroic abilities, we have two choices, both with very different usages. Uh, the first, Devouring Maul. Summon a giant maul, and basically after a short duration, these three, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, mouth things basically enclose an enemy or enemies drag them down and incapacitate them for a short time in addition to doing damage and in my opinion it's the superior choice here devouring them all offers a lot of utility in team fights especially if it's a tight fight and you have that you know big five on five clash going on even if it's only for a couple seconds devouring them all turns that for from a 5v5 clash into like a 5v3 or 5v2 clash making it an excellent ability to help in team fights our other choice here is Nidus Network, which allows you to place Nidus Roamers around the battlefield and travel between them. In my opinion, this is a little bit better for a team that's being highly mobile, or if you want to play a Siege style Zagara, since you can quickly hop between one point and another. The main downside of this is that if enemies see your Nidus Networks, they can kill them off, effectively negating out the benefit of being able to fast travel, which is why, in my opinion, it's a little bit less useful than Devouring Maul. Either way, she's a lot of fun to play, and when you know what you're doing with her, it's really, really easy to top hero damage, so let's hop into the game, show you what she's all about. I actually had a really good game with Sagara earlier today. I was doing, uh, you know, before I record these, I always do one warm-up match with the, the hero I'm going to be recording just to, you know, refresh myself in the playstyle, you know, get, get that mojo going. And it was an awesome match, and I regret that I didn't record it because it was, it was really good. Either way, welcome to Dragon Tribe. It's actually a really good map for Zagara, in my opinion. She can hold a node solo pretty easily against any other hero. That's another fantastic thing about her. Because of the movement speed and extra regen you get on creep, plus all your minions, it's very easy for Zagara to win in almost any 1v1 situation. There's not a lot of heroes that can take her out. When the enemies group up, of course, you're going to go down, but... You know, they send that Lone Ranger down to try and capture the Dragon Shine from you. Nah, nah, bitch. This is my shrine. Alright, we'll be up against... They also have an Abathur, and then an ETC, Sergeant Hammer, also Tassadar, and Tychus, okay? So for our first talent, pretty much hands down, we're going to be taking Reconstitution. Health Restoration bonus on creep increased by 200%. This gives you a ton of extra sustain, and it really does help a lot. 
Um, out of the other choices, Battle Demolitionalist helps if you're going to be going after seconds. towers, but ultimately you have your Roachlings to soak up ammo, so you don't really need that, and it doesn't have Five, a lot of use late into the game. Four, um, three, Roachlings take less damage. Two, you know, as one. I said, they're supposed to be fodder to begin with, not necessary. Well and then Banelings can travel twice as far, also completely unnecessary as long as you position yourself appropriately. So heading down into the lane, the first thing I'm going to do is start getting down some creep. Oh boy. Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Oh, wow. They were uh, not happy about me being there, it seems. I need to get some creep down. Very important to have creep. And I like to put it in the side areas where it's less likely to get nuked in a team fight. I have to be rather cautious. I'm gonna make sure I have the creep getting back to my base if need be. And as long as you stay on the creep, you have that regen coming in, so nothing to really worry about. The ancient shrines awaken. Control them and let loose the Dragon Knight. Agreed. Nope. Man, that task is going to make this really annoying to deal with. Activate the shrine, and the dragon's power is yours. I guess you're going down, bitch. Come on, Avatar, get him. Got him. Down goes the Tychus. Oh, we didn't level up yet. Snow, so we can cap it. Choose a talent. Effectiveness hindered. Must heal. Fuck that. Fountain. Get him back. So for our next tier, a couple choices here. Honestly, I'm a big fan of a Venom Spines, though. Um, I mainly like to consider that or the alternative being in Venom, which in Venom will help you to nuke certain heroes, which is always useful, but. All in all, I feel that the 20% range and extra damage you're going to get out is going to be more useful. Simply because that's going to allow you to really, really get some, uh, some nice damage into your target. And we can get nice damage over time. That might actually finish him off. Well, nope, doesn't look like it's going to. That's unfortunate. So we got to start getting... Uh, down. If he comes forward at all, we're gonna make his life a living hell. Oh, I pulled away. I had the Hydra on. I'm ready to go. Whatever. Almost got you, Titus. Oh, and there it is. The poison cleaning things up. That's one of the great benefits of having those Embedded Spines. You have that extra range, which helps quite a bit. And then on top of that, because of the fact that you're getting that, uh, that extra damage coming out. Oh boy, I don't like you. Alright, so here, hands down, Rapid Incubation. Honestly, the only real weakness of Zagara is the fact that she has um, a hard time sustaining her mana, and Rapid Incubation very quickly solves that one main problem. Some Banling Bursts. Hammer the hell out of there. Keep getting down that creep. Banling's in the middle of the lane to molest everything. Our siege on. So, already topping the hero damage, doing pretty high on siege damage as well. See, we're getting strong up to the point where we're just kind of pushing enemy heroes away. Nah, sorry. 
Alright. You're not hurt us. Rapid incubation. Get that mana back up. Alright, taking your pound. It's going down. You can eat a dip if you think you're gonna keep this. So, here, I like to go Devouring Maw. As I said, I feel that overall it's just a better ability. Um, it's going to give you more of a benefit, and you're really going to see that in team fights. So, get all those minions up. You can see this is what makes the roaches great. We have them up there, and they're just soaking up damage on that tower. So it's busy attacking other things and not us. Power. Grab this real fast. Fort lost. go and get some uh, siege guys here. So as you guys see, I'm kind of alternating between my targets here. Um, basically, the damage over time effect from uh, Venom Plus 5 will stack. So doing it like that will allow you to get really, really good damage in from that. He did. Um, and for our next talent, as you can see right there, Group Spines, increase Hunter Killer range and damage. Now, Mutalisk is an alternate choice here, and they did improve the Mutalisk quite a bit, making it better than what it used to be. But still, in my opinion, you're going to be better off with Group Spines. Um, a lot of people might suggest going for Giant Killer if you're going to be focusing on popping off heroes, but overall, I feel that the Hydralisks do an excellent job all on their own of taking care of enemy heroes. So because of that, we're going to make them stronger. And on top of that, that's going to be excellent synergy with Brood Expansion, which we're going to be picking up next, which will allow our Hydra to be more effective than they already are by giving us two. Oh my god, he pain in the ass, Tassadar. Don't make me kill you, Tass. <laughs> Glorious. See the Hydralis alone pretty much sending him back. Making sure he knows he's not fucking sitting here. And that was the Hydralis securing the kill. That's why I said, man, making those Hydralis stronger. They are not to be fucked with. People very, very often underestimate how powerful they are. There's a reason they were one of the one of the top tier early game units in StarCraft. Their Hydralis ain't nothing to fuck with. So I'm gonna bust through the bottom lane probably meet up with my team. My hero damage isn't nearly what it could be, but I'm keeping up with the guys taking Dragon Knight simply by just, you know, focusing on, uh, on sieging on my own, which is pretty powerful, needless to say. Bye-bye. So, 
two charges of Hunter Killer. Like I said, that's what you're gonna want here. Pretty much guaranteed. Get our rapid incubation off. As you can see, Zagar is quite effective at picking up our camps as well. will continue. With the marks, this lane's going down. Who will control the Dragon Knight's power? got me but but it looks like we did in fact break through the tower and the gate there goes the other tower as well my siege was successful 66,000 damage we're still keeping up we're doing pretty well in hero damage even though we're not focusing on team fights so that's pretty impressive we're all not bad for stuff well you can see just how I mean early I think you guys got a really good grasp of just how powerful and venom spines were and being able to harass key targets out of that lane and on top of that our siege capabilities even without having the talents focused around sieging, you know, like Demolitionist or Corpse Feeders or, um, you know, Ventral Sacks, another focused siege talent, and Fest, another focused siege talent. Even without that stuff, we're still able to really get some high damage into these lanes while we're fighting. And on top of that, we're not doing too shabby against heroes as well. So at this point, we're going to meet up. <clears throat> now that we've busted through that lane, it's time to start working our way through other lanes. We'll probably go through this one in a second here. Their avatar is somewhere back there. Now that already did Roachling Nest. Stuck. Oh my god, they pinched me an ETC Unleashed fat fucking power. cow. Damn it. Damn it, damn it. Either way. Entrance sieged open, entrance sieged open, entrance sieged open. Meanwhile, they aren't even they're not even past the keep there or the keep here, and middle is still basically intact. Run Omni. You can make it. Oh no. Damn it. How's the Abathur doing? I think he's doing a pretty damn good job, actually. Abathur has been really active on, on trying to keep targets alive. The shrines are gathering power. The Dragon Knight calls from within the stone. Oh no, they made it into the base.
Bolt of the Storm, which is going to allow us to uh, chase after anything. And secure kills like that. And honestly, there's no, I mean, Tyrant Maw isn't really necessary here at all, simply because of the fact that you have to secure the kill with it, and I think it's much better at getting into the team fight and you know, getting damage than specifically securing it. Tychus go. Oh man. You done fucked up now, Tychus. Gotcha, bitch. Bad idea, bitch. Never siege up against something that's more than capable than you are. But yeah, you basically have to get the kills with Tyrant Maul to make it effective. Um, otherwise, the 50% damage, it's like, you know, it's... I feel that it's it's more move focused around powerful CC than it is damage. Obviously, we didn't take Broodling Nest, and Fury of the Storm is alright, but once again, I think the mobility is going to be more helpful than the other choices we have available here. in their base with that creep. You can see even the poison sniping up my buildings. Down goes the hammer. Killing spree. Fucked up now, buddy. No getting away from me. <laughs> that blink. Look at the lanes, get the regen globe. This curve. Chase me, Tychus. Watch what happens here. Oh, you just got shit on. I did have the Abbot through there assisting, but even then, he still got shit on. Take our mana up. Power gathers within the shrines. Unleash the dragon's breath. See, did you think you were going somewhere? No, we're not going anywhere. I'm sorry. Sorry, tank. You're dead. And destroy your enemy. Well done. This siege. You can't stop the siege. Look at that. Already up to the top of hero damage now. And siege damage after fighting for just a little bit. So as long as you can sustain the mana on her, she's pretty much fucking disgusting. Such a such an amazingly powerful hero when played correctly. I'm playing for that little extra mobility. They can't even stop the siege now if they want it, I don't think. Oh no, we got a Dragonite coming. This one's over. Send the bane things! Boom, boom, boom! And that's the game. 
So 13 and 2, 134,000 siege damage without ever even taking the Dragon Knight, and 46,000 hero damage. An excellent, excellent Zagara game, in my opinion. Well, like I said, guys, she is a very versatile hero. As you saw, I was, I mean, in team fights, there wasn't really anyone that was able to stick with me in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you know, between the poison damage and the hydralisks and the roachlings and the banelings. We have so much damage potential. On top of that, you would wrap incubation, giving you a ton of sustainability on your mana and on your health, which is already usually topped off simply because of the creep. All in all, it just makes Zagara a very, very powerful hero to play, especially when you know what you're doing. So either way, thanks for tuning in. Obviously, we have two more heroes to bring you guys for this week. Um, still haven't decided which tank I'm going to do. Probably going to be Arthas. But I also decided I'm going to bring you guys a support with Lili because she's a relatively easy character. But, uh, you know, because she's easy and she's cheap to play, I figure a lot of people are going to be playing her and it'd be good to, you know, show a little bit of my experience with Lili and show how to really make her an effective hero. So either way, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time with another strategy showcase.